NATO enhances command and control capabilities, drives modernization, and strengthens uh, what we have been discussing for the last uh, two days, burden sharing. Colleagues, as we all move towards forward with uh, further missile defense systems related purchases, there is an imperative to maintain these purchases within the Alliance. Doing so maintains equipment commonality, which facilitates interoperability and encourages uh, investment in our common Euro-Atlantic defense industries base. I can report to you NATO ballistic missile defense is progressing apace. However, there remain several challenges demanding attention uh, moving forward. Among them are budget constraints, an expanding set of threats by the Alliance, and the challenges of dealing with the Russian objections uh, to the systems uh, as they are improved. As this report indicates, Russian objection uh, to the NATO ballistic missile defense system are not new. Past attempts to work towards a broader policy of missile defense cooperation with Russia uh, ground to a halt on November 13 when Russia unilaterally froze ballistic missile defense cooperation with NATO. Neither NATO nor Russia was able to agree on any form of system that uh, would outsource security guarantees to the other and ensure those uh, guarantees that they were looking for. Well, a NATO ballistic missile defense is purposed and prepared uh, to protect military assets and populations in Europe from our ballistic missile threat. It's not conceived with the, the intention of under, undermining Russia's strategic deterrent capabilities. Moscow's chief complaint focuses on the more capable missile interceptors, those part of the European planned adaptive approach phase three upgrades, which uh, is perceived, which Russia perceives capable of intercepting Russian ICBMs, thus destabilizing the balance in strategic uh, forces. To date, while NATO has uh, uh, reiterated and made clear the purpose of the ballistic missile defense architecture and studies have shown this, the scientific infeasibility of Russia's argument, Moscow continues to voice opposition to the system. Russia's objections to the NATO ballistic missile defense also likely stem from broader geostrategic concerns. Moscow is claiming strategic encirclement by Washington's planned modernization of U.S. nuclear forces and higher levels of engagement in missile defense in the Asia-Pacific region. Further, allied modern capabilities in the air, land, and maritime, and space domain are clearly worrying Moscow about its ability to maintain any effective strategic deterrent in the future. Such concerns, however, will not deter or dictate alliance uh, defense efforts and should not do so. NATO is not opposed to reopening productive dialogue uh, with Russia on the topic of ballistic missile defense amongst other uh, subjects. The current political environment, however, impedes such a reality in the foreseeable future. Only uh, substantial change in Russia's behavior internationally, however, will lead uh, to a, a renewal of practical civil and military cooperation. To conclude, colleagues, I would like to note uh, that in the face of evolving ballistic missile threats, Alliance resolve to protect allies in Europe is strong. We, as NATO members, uh, state parliamentarians, have several tasks in front of us regarding the Alliance's ballistic missile defense efforts. First, we must maintain 
uh, remain educated about the subject. And we must know what our countries are doing to contribute to the system. As the system continues to be com uh, completed and inevitable upgrades are required in the future in our role uh, to know the size, scope, and role of the system. The quickly evolving political spectrum across the alliance may also require informed uh, responses about the clear and common benefits of the system, particularly in the face of potential domestic political dissent or calls for uh, retrenchment policies. In order, in, in addition, as I note in the report, the persistence of Russian protests about the NATO ballistic missile defense system, also ill-founded, uh, and they are ill-founded, and mostly politically expedient messaging directed uh, towards uh, a domestic audience. NATO plans uh, uh, to defend its European territories from missile attack. This is a clear alliance interest. No external third party may be permitted to determine the alliance's uh, defense policies. Finally, as always, I look forward to your comments, and this is the time for your comments. We have developed, as I indicated, this bibliography is pretty extensive. Uh, we've put done a lot of research uh, on this, but it, we're at the stage now where we need your input so that we can come up with a final report uh, in the fall, at our fall meeting. Mr. Chairman, I return the, uh, the podium to you to, to determine if there are any comments from our colleagues. Thank you very much, uh, Joe, for this comprehensive and excellent uh, report uh, on a topic which I think is one of the biggest threats we face uh, nowadays as an alliance. So um, we have already some inscriptions. Um, the list is not closed yet. So. Um, first of all, I would like to give the floor to Mike Turner from the USA. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I want to congratulate Senator Day on an excellent report and a, and a great topic. I, I think the report accurately reflects and recognizes the significant policy shift that has occurred uh, in NATO, as where we've had in many uh, times discussions about on this missile defense that might have been contentious, this is a recognition that NATO has fully embraced both the mission, the importance of missile defense, and uh, that it is universally now uh, a topic which is accepted and uh, is pursued uh, by, by the Alliance. I have uh, two quick comments and then uh, a suggestion for some additions. Uh, in paragraph 68, I would like to make a recommendation that the first sentence um, be deleted. Uh, it currently says European legislatures will also likely experience significant turnover and changes in their body politic in the coming years due to a rise in populist and reactionary policies. You know, obviously, I think if, if I was an incoming member uh, of the NATO Parliamentary Assembly, I wouldn't want to read that the prior Parliamentary Assembly had characterized uh, my uh, election. Uh, and so you might want to uh, consider uh, deleting that. The second sentence, I think, is very important in that it challenges us to pursue uh, education and advocacy uh, for, on missile defense. And then paragraph 54, and talking about Russia, um, it accurately reflects the shift in NATO-Russia relations as a result of Crimea. But I think especially since we happen to be in Georgia, it would be noteworthy for us to amend that paragraph to include a reference that it was preceded by uh, Russia's uh, invasion uh, of Georgia and its, its continuing occupation that was then exacerbated uh, by Crimea. And then my request for an addition, if you look on the um, section on Russia and NATO, uh, we, we talk about failed cooperation, we have Russia's concerns and um, dialogue with Russia, but I think two things that are missing that are important are, are one, when we talk about missile defense and Russia's reaction to the NATO and the United States missile defense, we very rarely uh, engage in a discussion of deployed Russia missile defense. Uh, the deterrence report that was published last year um, has a, a significant section on Russia both touting and describing their missile defense initiatives. I think that's in great 
contrast to their voicing concerns because their missile defense system, specifically uh, around Moscow, is viewed as very effective um, and uh, is also destabilizing. Um, secondly, I think uh, in this section it would um, be beneficial for us, although we correctly state that our missile defense systems are not targeted toward Russia, we should, I think, note uh, their active modernization of their missile systems and of their nuclear weapons systems. I don't think it requires an exhaustive description, but I think it should be noted uh, that their investment is certainly threatening and um, is uh, both a threat to uh, the United States and all our NATO allies. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Turner. And uh, they're all very good suggestions for improvement. We've made note of them, and uh, they should be reflected in the uh, final report. Then I would like to give the floor to Gilbert Lebris. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Je souhaite tout d'abord euh, remercier aussi le rapporteur, euh, cher Jaudet, pour euh, ton travail très riche et particulièrement intéressant. La défense en, antimissile euh, balistique de théâtre est une euh, composante importante de la sécurité des États membres de l'OTAN. Nous travaillons ensemble depuis longtemps sur cette question et, et je salue le travail euh, du rapporteur qui permet de faire un premier état des lieux de, assez complet et complet sur cette euh, capacité collective. La France est favorable au développement d'une défense antimissile balistique collective. Je l'avais d'ailleurs précisé dans un rapport que j'avais fait il y a sept ans pour le Parlement français. Je voudrais cependant rappeler que si la défense antimissile peut venir compléter le rôle des armes nucléaires dans la dissuasion, elle ne peut en aucun cas s'y substituer. Nous devons toujours avoir présent à l'esprit que les capacités de défense antimissile ne peuvent garantir une efficacité totale et pérenne sur toutes les menaces. La dissuasion nucléaire demeure donc pour la France la garantie ultime de la sécurité et du maintien de la paix. La capacité de défense antimissile de l'OTAN, qui est un instrument nouveau pour l'Alliance doit aller de pair avec des forces nucléaires et conventionnelles efficaces et elle n'est pas une panacée qui nous exonérerait de tout effort de défense collective. Nous devons également évaluer régulièrement l'efficacité et la réactivité de nos systèmes de défense balistique pour les maintenir à un niveau technologique et opérationnel suffisant pour parer à toute menace. Je veux Également rappeler que cette capacité est et doit demeurer une capacité défensible, sans cibler qui que ce soit en particulier. Les capacités doivent donc, de l'OTAN doivent compliquer les plans d'un adversaire et limiter l'ampleur des dégâts pour tout agresseur potentiel. En ce sens, nous devons effectivement améliorer notre dialogue avec la Russie, comme tu l'as dit, cher Jodé, euh, car elle est un point de blocage certain pour les relations entre l'OTAN et son voisinage oriental. Nous devons faire preuve d'une meilleure pédagogie pour montrer que cette capacité renforce la sécurité globale du continent européen au service d'une paix partagée. Enfin, la France souhaite que le coût de ces systèmes soit maîtrisé et justement réparti entre les membres. Cette coopération peut donner lieu à des synergies industrielles bénéfiques aux entreprises de l'ensemble des parties prenantes. Ça a été souligné dans différents rapports pour euh, qu'une solution européenne, notamment des défis technologiques performantes et, euh, et modernes de défense antimissile, soit apportée. Ce, ce projet structurant pour l'Union européenne et l'OTAN doit servir une meilleure interaction stratégique, opérationnelle et économique entre les membres. Mais c'est bien dit dans ton rapport. Merci pour cela. Merci beaucoup, M. Labri, et merci pour votre appui. Une raison qu'on a fait cet rapport est pour l'éducation. Ça va aider, j'espère, chaque de nos, nos collègues avec l'explication qu'est-ce que c'est cette note. C'est la défense. C'est pour la défense uniquement. On a fait note de, de vos commentaires. Merci.
Thank you. Then Min Campbell from the UK. Um, I also welcome this report, not least because it reflects a great deal of what is United Kingdom policy on these issues. Um, I was particularly struck by the distinction drawn by our French friend a moment or two ago bet between deterrence and defence. If I may say so, I'd like to support him in that distinction. Too easy to say that we don't need to maintain a nuclear deterrence because we have such defences as would preclude any adversary damaging us. That, I think, fails to understand properly the purpose of deterrence, which, of course, is to create in the mind of a potential adversary uncertainty as to the circumstances in which nuclear weapons may be used. It's an important distinction, and we should not blur it. Uh, we have a number of detailed amendments, uh, drafting amendments, and rather than burdening the committee uh, and indeed its director with these uh, this morning, or this afternoon rather, uh, we will submit them in due course. But there's just one uh, point I wanted to make, and it's in relation to paragraph 50, which you find on page 9. Uh, and you'll see there, paragraph 50, it talks about the announcement by the United States of plans to deploy THAAD, terminal high, not attitude, but altitude. Uh, it seems there has been a, a typing error. I'm sure it was on a transcription, rather, of composition. Uh, terminal high altitude air defense system. As I understand it, that deployment has now taken place, uh, and therefore it's necessary to bring the report up uh, to reflect that. The other amendments... Uh, yep. The other um, amendments are of the same nature, but I wish once again to record my congratulations to the rapporteur for producing such a comprehensive approach to a very difficult issue. Thank you. Uh Lord Campbell, and we will look forward to receiving your written uh, submissions. I appreciate your attitude in uh, in providing those uh, written comments. That will be uh, that will be helpful to us, and we'll correct uh, those uh, other points that you've you've raised. Thank you. And and the fact that we talked about uh, uh, thermal high altitude area defense systems, uh, <clears throat> this when this report was done, that had not been. Uh, deployed but has now and we will uh, will rectify the report for uh, the final report in the fall okay then mr shirin unal from turkey thank you very much mr chairman <clears throat> dear colleagues i would like to express my sincere appreciation to the rapporteur for this competent work worldwide international development demonstrate that this important issue will always be on the agenda of the NATO in the forthcoming years. For this reason, the report that we are examining right now has an utmost importance and should be taken into consideration carefully. Dear friends, Turkey is one of the front line of the every threat that the alliance faces. Today, my country is one of the premiers in the fight against terrorism and other asymmetric threats. Ballistic missiles are also a major concern in our region. And as Turkey, we believe that NATO's missile defense should be planned in detail to cover every corner of the alliance. Therefore, I would like to propose some amendments to the report. And I would like to emphasize that the amendments are mostly brought into your attention to accord this report to the communicate of the Warsaw, Warsaw Summit. I will send my amendment to the reporter. Thank you for your attention and support. Thank you very much, and that uh, we uh, we inviting uh, amendments. Uh, we look forward to receiving yours as well, and we'll give them uh, all uh, due consideration as we receive them be between now and and our fall meeting. Thank you, merci. Then a question of Lorenzo Battista from Italy. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much for 
the report. I have uh, one proposal. It uh, is uh, to integrate uh, on page uh, 17 uh, a picture that describes uh, uh, also the capability of uh, ballistic uh, uh, from the submarines. Uh, we also notice uh, that there was uh, an attack by a Russia submarine and to Syria, so I think uh, it uh, should be an integration of this uh, excellent report. And then uh, 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 just one consideration about the threat of uh, North Korea. We have um, a, a mission, a visit uh, two years ago in, in the South Korea, and uh, it was, uh, let me say, some funny to see uh, that uh, uh, how they describe all the failed uh, about uh, drones uh, that uh, fall in the South Korea by North Korea. It seems that uh, the competition that uh, is winning in North Korea is the highest flag. So this is the competition uh, on the borders. So I think that one aspect is missing, but this is one uh, uh, my political consideration that uh, I also uh, read uh, in uh, an article uh, uh, prepared by our president, Paolo Ali, is, uh, uh, that uh, maybe is uh, be behind uh, the, the threat of North Korea uh, could be China. Because uh, it's uh, for me, and uh, I don't think also for me, it's uh, complicated to see how uh, could uh, North Korea develop uh, a threat and uh, uh, ballistic uh, uh, capabilities? So uh, it seems uh, that uh, maybe China influence uh, these uh, capabilities in North Korea, and uh, it's kind of a cold war that now is uh, not only cold war. And uh, I would uh, ask you a comment uh, about uh, this. Thank you. Uh, I I don't think it's. Uh for me to uh, to suggest one way or the other that uh, China might have uh, closer relations with North Korea than uh, than we generally believe, uh, but I hope I hope not. Uh, I truly hope that uh, that China is is evolving uh, through the World Trade Organization and other uh, world organizations to try and play a leadership role that's much broader than uh, than one. Uh, rogue regime in North Korea. Thank you. Then Frank van Kappen from the Netherlands. Thank you, Chair. First of all, uh, my compliments for the report, an excellent report. I've got a proposal and a question. The proposal is, uh, and I've done it several times before, is for, missile, for maritime missile defense you need uh, the sensor to detect the ballistic missile in space and track it. You need the uh, launcher, the shooter, and you need the missile. If you talk about burden sharing, to take the burden off the Americans for maritime ballistic missile defense, I see that Denmark, the Netherlands, and Germany have air defense frigates that have the sensor capability to detect the missiles in space and track them. They have the launchers that can launch the SM-3 missile. The only thing we don't have is the, is the missiles. What you need to do is just a, a small software app, uh, modification to be able to do that. The problem is the missiles are extremely expensive. But that, in my opinion, is an excellent uh, idea to, to, to purchase the missiles together, maintain them together, and store them together. And when ships go to sea on duty for missile defense, you draw the missiles from the, from the storage and now replace them. If there is one area where we can come very quickly to European missile defense, maritime missile defense capability is when these nations join forces. Also the Norwegians, the new Norwegian frigates have potentially that same capability. I just wonder why we haven't done it yet. The other, the other is a question, and it's a little bit sensitive, but I'm still going to ask it. <clears throat> I see that Turkey is going to uh, is, is contemplating buying the S-400 Russian missiles. Of course, Russia, uh, of course, Turkey is a sovereign nation; it's their decision. But my technical question is: these systems have to be plugged into a recognized air picture, and that recognized air picture in NATO is only accessible 
with a special key. So only having the system gives you a range of about 70 kilometers that you can look around. You need the key to get access to the, to the uh, recognized air picture. And that is controlled by the Americans. Now my big question is, if Turkey, a trusted NATO ally, makes the decision to buy a Russian system, is it technically still possible to get the key and get access to the recognized air picture? Or do they have to plug into the recognized Russian air picture? I think um, uh, the, the comments that I made earlier, uh, Franklin, in, in relation to uh, interoperability and buying equipment uh, uh, from suppliers within the, within the alliance uh, is uh, was a polite way of saying uh, just to be a little careful about uh, doing other things uh, without naming names or uh, or blaming. Uh, but <clears throat> our background information is that NATO officials indicate that it it would be uh, this would be a very difficult situation should uh, should that purchase go ahead. So it's obviously uh, within the radar and being being watched and uh, and discussed. And your other point uh, of uh, expanding the term burden sharing to uh, equipment sharing is uh, an interesting concept that uh, we've made note of. Thank you. Then Georgi Kandalaki from Georgia. Thank you. I have a question and remark. Question is, uh, how has uh, Russia's behavior and uh, in the, indeed also on the missile uh, uh, question deployments in Crimea, uh, something that the report covers, uh, whether you, you uh, see that influencing the uh, uh, not only just the, the discourse uh, in NATO, but all specifically whether do you see any symptoms of, uh, let's say, uh, uh, going back to the debate of 2009 and the missile shield uh, uh, that was uh, that was suspended uh, by the United States in 2009 in, in Europe? And I want to thank Mr. Turner for, uh, for of course, uh, in, uh, his point on uh, on including Georgia and Ukraine in the same context regarding paragraph 54, but in general, too, I think it is in the interest of NATO, but also in the interest of Georgia for Georgia and Ukraine for these two problems to be viewed as part of the same package, let's say, because Russia's conduct against these two neighbors is part of the same problem. That's the truth. Uh, and the aim there is obviously to reverse the results of the Cold War. Uh, unfortunately, the behavior of my government on the Ukrainian question is little, uh, little, not very consistent, I would say. Georgia is not acting uh, together with Ukraine, and no visits to Ukraine, uh, not, uh, not playing in the same team. But nevertheless, uh, I think uh, it would serve our interests better if we not forget Georgia when we talk about Ukraine and vice versa. Because again, now we know, and now even the uh, most vocal critics that blame Georgia in 2008 have understood that the Russian invasion of Georgia in 2008 was not an anomaly, uh, but was part of a larger problem. And that going back to use business as usual with Russia in 2008 so quickly, perhaps was not the right thing uh, for the large, a larger common interest. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments, and <clears throat> we take your uh, uh, support for uh, Mr. Turner's uh, suggestion to name uh, and, and refer to uh, the invasion 2008. Uh, uh, that's, <clears throat> it's an important part of uh, historical fact, and it's also important that uh, we learn, uh, maybe we learned that we we were too anxious to go back to discussions uh, when we when we shouldn't have. So I think that the, these are lessons learned, and hopefully um, this this report is another part of that lessons learned. And we thank you 
for your comments in relation to uh, uh, what uh, is uh, happening in uh, the Black Sea. The, uh, we understand that uh, NATO's uh, projecting stability initiative has resulted in increased Black Sea uh, activities, planning, and exercises, and that's all part of, uh, uh, of displaying uh, NATO's resolve in this instance. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Then Mr. Nervuzov from Azerbaijan. Sir, we, we don't have the... Sir, we have to wait for translation. We hear you, but we don't understand you. Okay. Translation set. Okay. Try again, please. Хочу выразить свою благодарность докладчика, господин председатель. Докладчика своей благодарности. Вы говорили о Ирана и Северной Корее, баллистической ракеты. Я хочу еще добавить, есть существует это С-400 и ракета «Искандар-М», который оперативный тактический ракетный комплекс уничтожения ПВО и ПРО. Эта ракета создает большую угрозу Южного Кавказа и в том числе Европы, потому что недавно Россия дал за 1 миллиард долларов вооружения бесплатно Армении. Арме... Ар... Президент Армении Сарксиан выступил, он будет бросать эту ракету в территорию Азербайджана и Турцию. Как вы относитесь к этому вопросу? Спасибо. I think the, uh, the report uh, is going to be, uh, be worked on in relation to the Russian capabilities and the importance of NATO ballistic missile defense versus Russia. We have an entire section on that now, uh, and uh, Mr. Mike Turner has made some suggestions for improvements, and uh, we will take uh, your points into consideration at the same time. We have made note of them, and we thank you for that intervention. Then a question from Mr. Nahapitian from Armenia. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I would like to react on statement of Azerbaijani delegate uh, on about the reaction on Iskander or S-400. National security strategy of Armenia has always been defensive, and activities of neither Armenia nor Artsakh Republic Armed Forces have been directed against the stabilization of situation in the South Caucasus. Uh, concerning the missile system acquired by Armenia, this measure is directed to restoration of balance of power in the region. Azerbaijani delegation has forgotten to mention that Azerbaijan regularly spent billions of dollars on acquiring offensive armaments from different states. According to the international reports in 2015, Azerbaijan was the largest importer of major weapons in the Europe. We have never welcomed arms race, yet when peaceful population of Artsakh Republic is continuously threatened, the necessary balance of power must be restored. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Thank you. Um, I have another uh, comment on the excellent report, uh, Joe. Um, I was with some colleagues witness of the at-sea demonstration in the end of 2015 in Scotland, 
where we saw that a Dutch uh, frigate, uh, air defense frigate, uh, tracked uh, uh, anti -ballistic, uh, a ballistic missile, and that missile was um, engaged lately by the USS Ross, a US destroyer. And also the fact that Germany and the Netherlands are working closely together in the Apollo project. It's a new project which was uh, signed uh, by both ministers. You can say that it's not only about missile defense being a very important subject within NATO, but it gives also the opportunity to work more closely together as allies uh, on the operational level. And these are, I think, uh, two very good examples. Maybe we can see them ourselves when we plan new committee visits, but I think these are very good examples of, of, of and strengthening the alliance on this uh, typical issue where we still have some shortfalls, and maybe you could add it in your... Uh, uh, final report. Thanks. Th thank you very much, and I think that's absolutely one of the uh, um, purposes of this report is the educational aspect. And I refer you to uh, page uh, page one, where we talk about the evolution of uh, uh, of this whole area of ballistic missile defense. And it was in July of 2016, the Warsaw Summit. Uh, declaration uh, uh, transferring command and control of certain aspects of the Ashur ASIS, ASIS uh, installation to um, to NATO. This is a, this is an important uh, aspect of bringing NATO members together and working on uh, on this evolving and uh, and growing threat. And then there was one other comment that was made earlier where we said we, we talked only about um, uh, two areas, North, North Korea and, and uh, um, Iran. And not so in, in, in the report itself, and perhaps I didn't in my summary have time to expand on that, but there's also the rogue uh, and non-state actors acquiring um, uh, technology uh, that could cause us some problems in acquiring missiles uh, by buying the information from other states. So that's another area that's growing and an important for us to keep uh, keep in mind when we go back to our own par parliaments to talk about how we can cooperate on these uh, on these items and why it's necessary that we're involved in ballistic missile defense. Thank you very much, uh, Joe, for this uh, very good report, which will be adopted, hopefully, in, uh, in the uh, autumn session. Um, Thank you, colleagues. Appreciate you. And your you may applaud attention. for this. <laughs> I would like to remember the members of this committee to our planned visit to South Korea, which, uh, of course, has um, in itself uh, the topic of missile defense. Uh, uh, Lorenzo already referred to it in the, in the last visit, uh, two years ago, and we had a visit before, but we are planning a visit, and I hope we can set the dates definitely uh, after this uh, uh, spring session. I have a meeting with the South Korean delegation later on uh, this uh, session, and uh, so far we planned the dates from 11 to 14th of September. So you can write out it in your agenda and be there, because it will be a very interesting uh, visit. Then... Um, We've come uh, to the end of the morning session. Thanks for all the contributions. It was very productive, I think. Um, we will now break for lunch. That will last until 2.30. And uh, afterwards, we will uh, consider the draft report, uh, special report on Afghanistan, presented by Wolfgang Helmich. Thank you, and have a nice lunch.